Welcome to our talk on upgrading incident management with Isinga. So we are talking about incident management and, and notifications in and notifications in more general uh, today. First of all, who are we? Uh, this is Johannes. He is the lead developer for our web team, and he is responsible for Isinga Web 2 itself, the Isinga PHP library, and many modules. And me, I'm Julian. I'm the lead developer for our core team, mainly responsible for Isinga 2 and Isinga DB, the Go daemon from that. And we are both, re both responsible for what you'll see today. Mm. First of all, uh, there was a talk on OSMC from Bernd uh, relating to, or his uh, current state of Isinga talk on OSMC that has a part, had a part about notifications. Who of you attended this talk and remembers that somewhat? Not that many. <laughs> okay, then you will. There, this will be pretty much new to you. So. Uh, First of all, uh, we will start with what our goals are or why are we uh, actually pursuing this, what are we doing, why, uh, and what are the challenges we try to solve with this. So first of all, currently the only component sending out notifications in, uh, in the Asinga stack is Asinga 2. So if you have, uh, for example, the X509 certificate monitoring, then you will need to configure a check in Isinga 2, maybe automated by director, but still have to deploy this config, have this check to actually receive notifications for this. We'll try to improve on this by having these uh, components like certificate monitoring and other modules talk directly to what we're building and have sent notifications directly. So to avoid having you to configure all these uh, extra service objects uh, just for the purpose of having them to send notifications. And this means if we directly receive uh, information from multiple sources, we will also try to combine them into single incidents. So if you have a certificate expiring and some other check failing because of an expired certificate, because it's a good check and validate, actually validates certificates, then it's better to only receive uh, notifications once for this problem and combi uh, just combine this information. So uh, the next thing we're trying to improve on escalations with Isinga 2. You can do something like, say, if a notification should be, uh, should be sent to some uh, person if the problem is older than an hour, or you can say only if it's critical and so on, but uh, this is only a condition each time that's uh, checked for each notification. It's not an, there's no entity in the config that says this is an escalation. We are trying to change this. Um, this means uh, we have an escalation that has a flexible condition where you can say the specific conditions in which, uh, under which it will trigger, and we will go into this a bit more in detail later. Mm. And the main thing is, in Isinga 2, acknowledgments uh, are a bit weird if you want to build escalations. So you can acknowledge a service, and this just suppresses all notifications. So if you have a notification for this is critical, send it after three hours or so, and it was acknowledged without an expiry time, notification uh, never gets sent, and maybe it's forgotten, if it, even if it shouldn't. So we're trying to change this here. Mm. Related to acknowledgments, uh, we're trying something new here. So this is kind of supposed to kind of extend what uh, acknowledgments are currently in Isinga 2. Uh, we are trying to make this, so in Isinga 2 it's just, basic for the notification logic, it's just a single flag, is it acknowledged, is it not acknowledged, and then suppress the notification or it doesn't. Uh, we are trying to actually allow to uh, link multiple, possibly multiple persons to the incident, so in the sense that if you say you're an incident manager, it's supposed to mean that you're actually handling the incident, uh, and this will mean that follow-up notifications are supposed to be sent to you in this case. So uh, let's talk briefly about uh, the architecture we are building here. Uh, because uh, both of us are standing here, you might already have guessed that there is a backend component in this time similar to what we're doing with Isinga DB. This will be a daemon written in Go. This will like I think a two X five nine certificate monitoring, vSphere, and so on, and this will then also take care of sending notifications. 
there will also be a database similar to IsingaDB, but in difference to IsingaDB, this uh, will also store the configuration as an input. So you, the primary place for the configuration is the database. And we're planning to support all the database servers uh, that we are also supporting in other products, so Postgres and MySQL and Mari MariaDB. And then, as I already said, the primary interface to configure is the a, I think a web module that's obviously written in PHP. And there you will uh, edit your configuration and also it will show you what's going on, what open incidents are there, and you can interact with them, like as I said, manage them or, or make yourself a manager for an incident, for example. Mm. And well, the few people that attended Bernd's talk at OSMC, current state of Isinga, may remember this slide for those who don't. Uh, he had exactly this slide and afterwards showed a few photos from uh, showing both of us in front of a whiteboard with little to uh, no mockups actually. So this time we actually have more to show. So as it's web, Johannes will show it to, show it to you. Of course, it's my pleasure. <clears throat> So, uh, I hope you can read all the, uh, all the details. Is it too small or too big? No, it's too small. It's too small, of course. <laughs> Better? Yes, of course. So, uh, we can of course show you slides over and over, but uh, what I'd like to do now is to show you a demo of what we, are, we were doing the last two to three months. And uh, the first thing I'll show to you, to you is um, my environment, of course, in a single DB web, for those of you who know, don't know it yet. <laughs> um, we have a few services uh, with um, segmented in two areas, Windows and Linux. And uh, what, I'd like to do, what I'd like to do now is uh, set our notification rules up to show you what happens if we uh, simulate a problem for those of those services. But the first thing we have to make sure is that we have contacts because uh, we want to notify persons about uh, incidents, and what we uh, have now is, of course, our best colleagues <laughs> and uh, some group chats available. And those we will uh, make responsible for uh, objects and other things by use of so-called event rules. An event rule is uh, mainly one thing. It allows you to map events which are uh, transmitted by sources, as explained by Julian previously, to uh, contacts and other entities. And the first thing I'd like to set up is a, a rule that will take care of all the Windows hosts and services. Then we have the first escalation, which is supposed to report incidents to our group chat called Windows Level 1. Uh, and uh, without any delay. The, first uh, the second escalation, we have the possibility to define a condition and to therefore delay the notification. 
in this case, we want to escalate only if the problem severity increases to level critical. And in that case, we notify the group chat level two. So the next thing is we have an event rule now. Um, and since all, our, all of our objects are uh, currently up and uh, OK, we have to simulate a problem. I, do, uh, I will do that by using the process check result action on one of our uh, Windows services. Any message is, is fine now. <laughs> and we have a problem. What should, had ha what, sh what should have happened now is that the notification has been sent out to our group chat, Windows Level 1. And that's, that's, uh, all, and that's um, of course, what happened. We have a rocket chat implementation here. And the notification has correctly been sent to the group chat. There, we are able to see the object which, is, uh, which has the problem. And if we click on that, we, of course, see the detail view in SingerDB. But we also have the link to the incident in Isinga notifications. But uh, if you remember, we all also set up another escalation. The escalation, if uh, the problem raises to severity critical, we want to notify the group chat Windows level two. So let's raise the severity. And going back to the chat, we now see Windows level one still got notified because it has been previously notified and there's still no manager. Windows level two also got the notification about the state going up to critical. What Windows level two can do now is to manage the incident by taking responsibility and if the severity then increases even more, me, because I took the responsibility, is now notified. Not Windows level two or Windows level one, only me. <clears throat> The next thing is a little bit more complex because uh, for our Linux environment, we don't want to uh, first uh, notify a group chat in order to um, assign responsibility. We would like to assign respons responsibili responsibility immediately and not just uh, with a f fixed configuration, which <laughs> um, 
which uh, limits the contacts to a specific person or group chat, we want to send the notification based on our uh, based on the time the event occurs. Because uh, it's not just a single person who is responsible all the day and all the day, all the week. The shifts change, and uh, that's where uh, our schedules come in play. And our schedules are just like the calendar you are used to everywhere else. Here, our current uh, configuration shows that the, in the current week, the duty uh, was on Monday for Bernd to take responsibility, on Tuesday for Eric, on Wednesday, that's today, it's my duty, and uh, Thursday on the holiday, of course, Julian, <laughs> and the weekend, why not Blair him? <laughs> but of course, uh, I'm standing here now, and I can't take responsibility for any in incident that, ha that will happen now. So I will change the, my duty today and switch it over to Daniel. And now, if, a, if an incident happens for any Linux service, which we will, of course, simulate now, let's take the SMTP server down for a moment. You can see, Daniel got notified. And of course, if he visits the shows, uh, looks up the incident, he can now also take responsibility. Since uh, I clicked on the incident with my account, of course, it's not Daniel. This is just for the demo. Uh, now, of course, I'm the manager, but uh, that's also not quite, not so much of a problem because I already said it's just, in calen uh, just the calendar you're used to. So you also have the month view and the event that, uh, or the entry in the schedule which uh, takes um, the responsibility to a specific person based on the time is also effective the, current, the upcoming weeks. But I only changed uh, the duty today, so only today. I'm not the responsible, responsible person, but Daniel is. Uh, the next week, I'm still responsible on the Wednesdays. And that's, of course, a rule which is repeated weekly. and uh, goes on and on, even in coming months. So I hope this was enlightening to, uh, enlightening to you, and uh, you think uh, you will be using it in the future. What that means, and when in the future, will Julian t tell you? Uh, now. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Using other people's laptops, why am I too, too stupid to scroll? Help, get me on my slide. Whatever we. Yeah. 
So now we are back on the slides. Uh, so as you have seen, this is far from finished also. It wasn't our productive demo environment, but something locally. So uh, we wouldn't yet recommend to use uh, this in uh, production for anyone. And some of the things that are planned and we are missing or are thinking about implementing is, or to say we should implement this, would be rate limiting and bundling of notifications. So this is supposed to mean that if, say, 20 hosts go down at the same time, most often there's no value in the individual notification. It's much more useful if you just get a notification that says 20 things went down, look into the root cause. Obviously, it wasn't modeled by dependencies and your monitoring didn't catch it for you what the actual root cause was. Mm. The next thing is a more flexible options per recipient. As you've seen, there is so far nothing which would allow you to specify uh, uh, duty times uh, for different persons, except from you can create a schedule that happens to have everyone in their duty times in there, but maybe something like if you have teams uh, spread around the globe, they work in different time zones, maybe you want to reflect this in your notification schedule without uh, doing this in the schedule for each uh, week. Mm. Then one thing many notification channels provide, or many notification channels actually provide a return channel. So we have seen Rocket Chat, you may just reply there, or there are emoji reactions. Maybe uh, we want something like thumbs up means I managed this incident, so you don't have to go back to web, click it, if you can do it just from where you're reading the notification. And somewhat related to that, currently notifications in Isinga 2 are more a uh, fire and forgetting, it, it gets sent, but if that doesn't work, well, the notification got lost. Uh, the plan is to provide or uh, get more, more feedback from the notification channel implementation. So if maybe your uh, SMS gateway is down, it's still more useful to send an email than nothing at all. Or uh, also as many channels provide something like deliver receipts or read receipt, uh, you can also might want to do something like if the device that should receive the notifications offline, maybe send it to a different contact or via a different channel, fall back to SMS, hopefully that works if the data connection is lost or something like that. Uh, also with the notification scripts in Isinga 2, there are all kinds of uh, fancy things uh, people have built like integrating graphs in their emails or something like that. We would like to uh, have a look into how to fetch additional context for the actual, for the object that's notified about and integrated to our notifications as well. So you might be asking, when is this coming? Uh, we are planning to publish the source for what you've uh, just seen uh, soon. Uh, we didn't make it just in time for the camp, uh, but hopefully, maybe if we get enough time today, today, maybe on Friday, latest next week, I guess, but you will definitely know about this when we do it. But as I said early, that, that's an early preview. You can have a look at it, play around with it, but please don't use it in production. Uh, we also won't uh, help you with this uh, much if you run into problems, which you probably will with the, this state of development. Uh, the longer term plan, uh, plan is to have a release later this year that's uh, maybe not final, but includes most of the features that you will need to uh, do most notification tasks you can with um, I think are two at the moment, so that you can actually start with this uh, playing around more in your setup, see if it works for you, and so on. So and I think we're just in time. That's it for the talk today. If you're having any questions, please go ahead. Larry is coming with a microphone. Oh, we have lots of questions. Just for the recording, we're going to use the microphone for the questions. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, one question, how is the messenger integration done? Do you have rocket chat in there? Is there the possibility to include Metamorphs or Slack or something? 
Well, at, at the moment, uh, most of the, what you've seen is we've implemented a minimal set of things we need to uh, build the overall workflow. So for different channels, uh, the plan is to provide integration for more channels uh, by default, but also have uh, some mechanism of a generic uh, uh, method to implement your own channel. So we plan to have more channels by ourselves, but also allow uh, third-party integrations of whatever channel you would like. Hi, thanks Including for the Slack. talk. Um, how, um, it is my understanding you're going to outsource the sending out of the notifications to a new daemon written in Go. Yep. Um, how will you do high availability with it? Um, well, that's one of the things that's uh, still uh, to be decided in detail, like we are building this uh, first to uh, get used to the overall flow, uh, uh, flow of notifications, does this work, and then take care of uh, high availability. But uh, my intuition is that this will uh, result in some uh, active passive failover for you have two instances and one usually handles the notifications. If it fails, the other one takes over but not finally decided yet, like many things. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, thank you for the talk. So uh, I see you're trying to re-implement uh, large parts of uh, incident management now in Isinga 2. Um, did you think about you know, integrating with existing tools on the market that hey, may have a broad adoption, like for example ServiceNow? I or think Larry is, are wants there any to answer plans? that question. So, um, yes. However, what, what we actually need for, for the Isinga ecosystem is, is some default way for, for standard mechanisms that we can just ship with Isinga. And as mentioned before, um, we plan to have different channels for the notifications module as well. And of course, one of them could be ServiceNow, and another could be PagerDuty, OpsGenie, or whatever you have, MS Teams, Slack, name it. Um, but still, um, for us, it, it cannot be the standard way to require one of these services. So we have to have it built in into Isinga and then let the user decide what they actually use in, in their daily work, if it's email or, or a premium service provider like those. Hi, thanks for the presentation. I have a question um, concerning that on-call schedule you've showed. Um, would it be possible in the future to import that schedule from a calendar somewhere else, like Outlook or Confluence or something? Uh, yes, that was an explicit goal of the design. Like you've seen, it looks very much like a calendar. This means in the background we are also, uh, for the recurring events, for example, use uh, the exact uh, standard recurrence rules from the iCalendar standard. So this was with uh, having in mind to import this from different sources. Uh, hi, will it work with the Java module together? Can you me a driver? I'm not too familiar with the Jira module in detail. I know I don't know if Blaron can say so, something yeah. about it. Uh, so if, if you want to dig deeper into that, the Jira module is, of course, it, it shares a little bit of features with this because it notifies you by creating tickets in your Jira system. But what the Jira module also does is it gives you an overview over those tickets and gives you a connection into Jira directly and lets you communicate with the Jira back and forth. Um, whereas with the notifications module, we, we have this gener generic way of, of providing notifications. And perhaps there is a little bit of shared functionality, but in the end, the Jira module does more than just sending tickets because it has some more. F you, you can see it like an enhanced, advanced module for notifications specifically for Jira. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps th this could be a thing. Yeah. So yeah, there there are plenty of things that could be done with with this uh, architecture. Hello, thank you for the talk. Is there some kind of integration with OTRS or Znuni or any other um, forks? 
I didn't get the, the second thing you mentioned. What was it? Uh, OTRS or Znuni. Znuni is just a fork of OTRS. Well, uh, that's also one of the things uh, we can provide uh, integration into many things, but that's far from what we've looked into in detail. Maybe Blarium can comment on the big picture again. <laughs> to be honest, we didn't think of it before. Um, we, we will have to look at it. Um, I, I mean, so this is like the very early stage. Um, as mentioned by, by the developers, we just started two or three months ago. Um, we took plenty of time before to, to, to think of a concept that works for everything that we have right now um, and a concept that is open for the future as well. So we, we have open APIs and these kind of things. So it can be extended in many different ways because that's what we do with Isinga in many different ways. Um, so it's not a yes, but it's also not a no. Uh, it's just like maybe could be done. If that helps. Thanks for your talk. I have a question. Um, if an incident manager steps up, do you plan to notify previous contacts? Uh, yes, that's planned. At the moment, we are mainly sending uh, state notifications, but uh, there is more needed. Uh, that's one of the things, yes. Just one thing, because we are into the break, but that's not a problem, because I see that there, there's interest for questions. I'm just I'm just continuing until there's no questions left. <laughs> uh, two questions. Um, will you be providing some kind of plug-in mechanism so we can write our own notification methods that don't require us to write Go? Sorry, can you please repeat? I didn't understand. Will we have a way to write plugins to do our own notification uh, methods yes. that uh, aren't in Go? We are planning to have, at the very least, some similar exact your own command mechanism of sending notifications. Uh, we are also try. We plan to look into if you can implement your own plugins in Go. There's a module extension in Go, but again, not yet decided. But we plan to allow third-party plugins for all of this. Great. Um, and you showed a very fancy UI for creating notification rules and escalation rules. But can you confirm you'll be able to still do that through config file for those of us who have who have to deploy through automation thousands of instances? Uh, so, so your question is uh, how to, uh, if you want to can generate configuration for this. Yes. Can you, can you configure notification and escalation rules without having to go into the GUI and do it by hand? Can we do that through configuration files? Well, uh, not decided in de detail. I, uh, we understand that uh, this is desired, but uh, if maybe probably an API or something like that. Uh, yeah, just as a, gen <laughs> as a general piece of feedback on various new Isinga features that require configuration through the GUI is not great for those of us who have to deploy from our source of truth of automation because there's simply too of many course, things. Of course, of um, course. Currently, it's all in, in the database, so there's no file configuration. Um, the only thing we could consider in the future is an, just like an import functionality, but the main configuration storage will still be the database. Okay, please consider, consider that use case, especially if this is going to become the default notification method. Yeah, of course, method going uh, that's forward. also something that will be helpful to, for tests, so something will pretty certainly exist at the, in the future. Thank you. Feedback like that helps. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is about um, the stack issues. Uh, why is this not integrated into uh, Isinga Core, but a separate uh, thing in Go? Uh, the, Blair, just, just taking a big microphone. Um, the thing is, uh, the uh, we are trying to get away a bit more from C++ as this uh, is just a, a lot of lot of work to maintain. So we're trying to move a bit more towards Go. So that's the idea that we are trying to go more with Go. All right. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Two questions. Um, one, you stated that uh, you want to come away from having to implement uh, Ichinga CLI checks for certificate monitoring. 
but um, is there a fallback or another communication channel between the modules? Because if I want to have the certificate uh, monitoring also in the business process, for example, I still need to uh, provide a service uh, object that uses the Jinga CLI, or is there another mechanism planned? Well, if you need the information in Isinga 2, uh, then you still have to have this uh, check, but uh, we try to get the most use cases where you don't just want to get notifications. We try to handle these as easily as possible, but in some circumstances, you still might need to check, yes. And the other question, uh, is there a possibility to have on uh, service or hosts uh, objects a uh, flag for criticality? or on-call duty, out of office hours, for example? Uh, well, uh, you've seen where we filtered on uh, where the, the host groups, Windows and Linux, so this would be also the place where you could have your own, this is a very important host, this needs more attention if something goes wrong. So for custom variables, uh, it's also possible to filter on those? Um, not directly on custom variables at the moment. Uh, we only expose host variables in there, but uh, this is this is uh, still subject to change. There will probably be a mechanism to provide some custom variables, but we would like to try to avoid having to pump always all of the custom variables into it. So it might be something more like you can configure a set of custom variables that will also get exposed to this module then. Okay. I I don't want to steal everyone's break, so maybe one final question over there. Uh, when you enable the graphite module for Ethinga, you can send uh, metadata to have knowledge about what is happening over the time. So this kind of notifications or incident management could be available to be sent as metadata to have the information in the graphics or those things? I didn't uh, fully uh, understand the question. Can you please repeat it once? Yeah. When you enable the graphite module for the Zynga, you have the possibility to send metadata. So in the graphics, you can display more information. Uh, can this incident management could be used as metadata to display in the graphics the information or the notifications that have been sent or something like that? Uh, so you're uh, talking about the, uh, uh, what, wait, was it Grafana or Graphite? Graphite. Uh, graphite. So the uh, web plugin for, uh, I think, uh, the, the web module that integrates the graphs. Yeah. Uh, I think what is meant is the Graphite writer of Isinga 2, which has the option to also send metadata into Graphite. I guess that's what you mean, right? So, yeah. Oh yeah. As a, uh, so I, I, under, I understood that uh, as the um, metadata we ha we would like to uh, enrich our notifications with. So yes, uh, there should be or will be hopefully a link between the graphite module and the notifications module in order to enrich our, our notifications. What this uh, on the other side of the graphite uh, environment means, uh, I don't. No, quite <laughs> yet. <laughs> so that's the only thing we currently consider.